Hello, everyone. The right spring has a constant stiffness with the suspension travel. The spring rate controls right frequency of the sprung mass. The right frequency range from 1 to 1 and half hertz in most cases. This is true in passenger vehicles, buses, heavy trucks, and even military vehicles. The right spring with a damper attenuate the rough road vibration higher than the right frequency. Small cars of light weight have soft spring rate to match the right frequency target. Fully loaded passengers and cargo increase the sprung mass and decrease the right frequency substantially. This can be improved by dual weight spring. Longer jaws bumpers, especially in the rear suspension, serve the role of dual weight spring in small cars. Spring level ratio is 1.0 for strut suspensions and 1.5 for SLA suspension. Effective spring rate at the wheel center is reduced in SLA suspensions. For example, a 50 Newton millimeter right spring in SLA suspension would have an effective stiffness of 22.2 Newton millimeter at the wheel center. Spring preload, spring check load, or free lengths determine the vehicle trim heights. The vehicle would sit high if spring preload were higher than the requirement. In this case, suspension has more jounce travel but less rebound travel than the design. Dampers attenuate the vertical motion of the suspension. Relative motion between shock tube and piston generate the damping forces. Low and medium speed damping characteristics control ride qualities. Compression damping is softer than rebound damping. A damper is attached to a suspension part such as knuckle or LCA and then vehicle body at the top. The damping is maximized if the two ends are constrained rigidly. Otherwise, relative motion of a damper would be absorbed by damper attachment, bushing and mounts. Strut suspension are simple in the suspension configuration, but the shock in the suspension may be subjected to a side force, which cause wear in the shock sliding joint. Luxury vehicle adapt the controlled shock. Magneto Rheological or MR shock is a good example. Damping force in the MR shock is a function of not only shock relative speed but the control voltage. The shock supplier share the MATLAB black box models for vehicle dynamic cost simulations. The Jaws bumper or bump stop restrict the suspension travel in the jaws direction. Once the suspension hit a bump, it get a momentum and accelerate it in jaws direction. The right spring and damper try to slow down the suspension. In some cases, the spring and damper are not enough to stop the suspension at the travel limit or max effective jaws, in short MEJ. The jaws bumper is a non-linear spring to absorb the kinetic energy of the suspension to make a complete stop at MEJ. The slide shows a jaws bumper's drop test data. Force versus deflection curves come from a drop test. A quasi-static measurement data cannot represent the physics of the jaws bumper. Passenger vehicles use polyurethane bumpers which have soft entry feel and build up weight substantially. This is good for rough road ride where a small jaws bumper engagement does not generate the huge forces. But this is weak in high load where the small deflection at the end of the travel increase the force significantly. The rubber jaws bumper has a harsh ride but high load capability since Small deflection at high force absorbed more energy than the polyurethane bumper. The polyurethane bumper can be deflected up to 80% of its undeformed length. The fully compressed length 
to keep the suspension travel at MEJ is called the block height. The energy absorbed at the block height is one of the Jones bumper characteristics. The energy is calculated by the area under the force versus deflection curve. Jones bumper design is compromised between ride and load. The ride engineers are pursuing longer jousts free travel and soft entry fuel, which is generating high load. Many rigid bodies are used in vehicle dynamics modeling. Rigid body modeling is fine if the part is quite stiff or is not subjected to high force and large deformation. Examples are drop links, tie rod, and shock rod. In some cases, control arms, links, and knuckles can be modeled as rigid body, but not highly recommended. The rigid body should have good representation of mass moment of inertia and CG location. I have reviewed the lots of vehicle dynamics model where I found the many 1 kg mass, 1 kg millimeter square inertia. It is understood that the mass and inertia data are not easily available, but engineers should be use at least engineered assumptions for the data. Historical data would be a good reference. CAD software can provide better mass and inertia data than 1 kg mass and 1 kg mm square inertia. There are a few events where unsprung mass has a significant effect on the result. Only 1 kg difference of unsprung mass makes a significant change in performance. Vehicle dynamics engineers should spend enough time to collect the mass data and should compare them with a similar vehicle and historical data. It is good to understand the performance variation with unsprung mass. In all the vehicle development process, the vehicle program team set the mass target of the vehicle for curve, GBW, and Gower. This target would change with these design changes as the vehicle program proceeds. CG height data is not readily available. Historical data could be utilized until hardware measurement become available. Regression tools using historical data would be a good source of reasonable data. Engineers should be aware that electric vehicles manifest a way different CG height data due to heavy battery weight on the floor. Mass engineers regularly update the mass target and status in the vehicle development process. Ironically, I have observed that the vehicle dynamics CA engineers are a good source of mass data in all the vehicle development process. Engineers should be careful about CG location of rotating part. The top mount has several layouts to accommodate the shock, joust bumper, and spring forces. The single pass top mount is subjected to all three forces of shock, joust bumper and spring forces. It then transmits the total force to the vehicle body. The dual pass time mount is subjected to only shock forces. Spring force and joust bumper force goes to vehicle body directly. Since the single pass time mounts get the total force, the mount rate is typically higher and mount deflection is larger than the dual pass time mounts. Engineers should be careful to review the time mount configuration to properly represent in vehicle dynamics model. This is one of the common mistakes even experienced engineer can make. 